opportunity and to um, think in the future. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, uh, well, I, I might just end saying that uh, I think that there's a room for a design of a sensor that would be specifically meant for dealing with this uh, yeah. phenomenon. Yes. But, yeah. This is a good point to, to close the, the presentation. Unfortunately, Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> interaction in the chat, but we are yeah. really uh, behind schedule. So I think yeah, it's okay. time to move to the next speaker. Yes. And the last speaker of this session, uh, you can keep, let's say, sending questions and answer to the to the chat. Yeah. And thanks just once again for his presentation. And I mean, it, it, it was triggering a very interesting discussion afterwards that it's a pity yeah, to cut, but we time is a uh, tyrant <laughs> and we need to move forward. So I Thank give you. the floor to the last speaker of today that is Alexander Maller. Uh, he's uh, currently dividing himself by pursuing his PhD between uh, Montpellier and Narbonne and working uh, as a, in a company specializing in bioprocess monitoring. His interests are uh, focused on the effect of water on NIR and development of robust calibration and uh, today uh, Alexandre, uh, he will speak about the effects of water on scattering, taking into account path length modification. Please, flow is yours. You have 20 minutes and please try to be uh, on time. Sure. Can you hear me well? Yes, perfectly. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, good, uh, good morning. No. Oh, well, <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. Um, so, thank you. First, uh, thank to the organizers for letting me present this. Uh, work. So the work is on the effects of water on scattering um, and taking into account uh, path length modifications. So it's structured quite classically. So uh, introduction and context, materials and methods. I'll review the results and uh, discussion and conclusions and perspectives. So to give you um, some context on my PhD project, uh, we have uh, diverse organic wastes such as um, catering waste, uh, agricultural uh, residues, urban waste that uh, today can be valorized through uh, bioprocesses such as uh, anaerobic digestion or composting. And these bioprocesses allow to produce some uh, energy uh, such as methane or hydrogen and platform molecules such as uh, ethanol. And of course, uh, the treated waste uh, such as uh, which is called the digestate or compost, which can be used in, uh, as a fertilizer in agriculture. And so to optimize those uh, bioprocesses, there's a big need to uh, characterize those uh, diverse organic wastes in a very uh, uh, in a, uh, efficient way. And uh, what was proposed is the use of near-infrared spectroscopy to actually characterize those wastes. Uh, but today, this method uh, needs uh, to, we need to freeze dry and, um, and grind uh, the substrates before analyzing in them. And so that's, uh, that's kind of the, um, the aim of my uh, PhD project is really to uh, get a better understanding of the water effects in order, in order to be able to apply near infrared spectroscopy directly on those uh, diverse organic wastes uh, in a wet state. So, Coming back to the theory which was presented by Jean-Michel, so I won't go too, too, uh, too slow. Uh, we know that we have an absorbance which can be linearly uh, related to concentration. And uh, we have epsilon, which are the ext extinction coefficient, which, which is really specific to the chemical, uh, the absorbing uh, chemical. And we know that the, the Beer-Lambert uh, law doesn't hold, uh, or at least it holds in very strict uh, conditions. Uh, we in, it needs to be a homogeneous uh, media with low concentration, um, independence of absorbers. So the absorbents versus the, um, if they are in one in front of the other, then uh, the the law doesn't uh, is not uh, doesn't uh, hold. And so of course we know that in scattering media. Uh, Near-infrared spectroscopy is currently being applied, but this is thanks to uh, sound chemometrics that actually uh, compensate for this uh, non-linearity that uh, was presented by Jean-Michel uh, with the glass and the scattering effects. So scattering uh, in a scattering media, um, we know that we, we have actually uh, two phenomena that can be uh, uh, described. Uh, we have the path length that is uh, modified due to a repetitive uh, 
um, refraction events uh, at the interfaces uh, between the particles, uh, which uh, lead to uh, an increase or decrease of the path lengths. And the second phenomenon is that the, there are some photons that don't actually come back to the sensor. Uh, so it's a photon loss that we identify as an increase in absorbance, but it's just that the photons uh, leave. So one way of modeling a simple way is actually to, to say that there's a multiplicative, multiplicative effect. Uh, so uh, k, uh, k constant times the, uh, the path lengths and uh, an additive effect, uh, which has noted uh, here F. And this is really the basis of, um, of uh, uh, pretreatment such as uh, SNV or uh, MSC. Uh, where those uh, effects are accounted for. So coming back to the, the aquaphotomics approach, um, as Jean-Michel was saying, we have, um, it seems in this uh, discipline, the, the extinction coefficients are, and their peak positions and relative intensities are really of importance because uh, they are identified in, uh, in, um, in specific to water structures and water functionalities. Uh, and for, for example, um, there's a, a, um, currently active research on the, what actually constitutes the first overtone uh, OH region. Uh, so first, uh, using second derivatives, uh, some authors um, uh, stated that we had uh, six water species that constituted uh, this uh, broad overtone OH uh, peak. Uh, lately, then uh, there was the 2D correlation spectroscopy that uh, talked about a two-state uh, model of water. Uh, using multivariate curve resolution, three components were found to be most uh, suitable with the dependence of uh, salt uh, ionic strength. Uh, and then Gaussian nonlinear fitting procedures uh, happened to find the same results with six water species. And very lately, uh, uh, very recently, um, some genetic algorithms were applied and uh, 10 spectral uh, components uh, corresponding to nine water structures were, were found uh, uh, most suitable to model this uh, broad overtone uh, OH region. And of course, there's the aquaphotomics approach, which uh, consolidates using uh, different um, studies uh, and states that there's between 12 and 14 absorbent peaks. So, we see that there's a really uh, uh, an active uh, research on this. And one of the question is how to consolidate uh, those uh, uh, such water structures and uh, water state specific absorbance uh, assignments in scattering media. Um, so that's kind of the aim of uh, what we, the, the study is uh, try to find a way to model the, the absorbance uh, in wet scattering media. So uh, our hypothesis was that the light path length is actually, in the, when there's water, it's actually directly related to water content itself. And uh, it's, it's related by a power law. So uh, we stated that uh, the path length is L0, uh, constant uh, light path length, times the concentration C in water, uh, powered to a constant A, uh, which might be dependent of lambda. And so really the, the, the intuition behind is that water, the more there's water, the more uh, light goes into, uh, into the, um, the media. And uh, so light pass length is mod modified. Um, so this is kind of our new uh, Vieux-Lambert law that we uh, propose for water scattering, wet scattering media. So to investigate this, um, we used a drying experiment um, where we have a custom um, air drying system where we, uh, we have a sample which is um, uh, just under a spectrometer. So the spectrometer during the drying actually uh, collects uh, spectra, near infrared spectra, and um, the, the sample is actually in a closed circuit with air that circulates. And this air is uh, actually dried by a desiccant. And this desiccant is weighed continuously. And so this allows us to get the the, the water content of our sample uh, during the drying process. So we were, the sample that we chose to, um, to monitor was actually uh, aluminum uh, paper pellets uh, mixed with water. And why aluminum paper pellets? Because we wanted to have a, a sample where only 
scattering were was occurring, uh, and really to to in order to grasp the spectral changes related to moisture content uh, variations. So this is the data that we uh, collect. Um, so we have um, during the drying time here in this axis, uh, we have the the near infrared spectra from. Uh, 60% uh, of water content to uh, about 5% uh, of uh, uh, water content. So coming back to the law, how, to, how we chose to validate this law, we first needed, so in this uh, beer on bear law formula, uh, you see that you have the additive effect F, and we needed to remove those additive effects in order to then show the, the, the linear relationship. Uh, with a power law. Uh, and to do this, we use the EMSC um, uh, model. So I'll review this just uh, after. So once we have this absorbance corrected from the additive effects, uh, we just uh, took the log and then we, we did a least squares regression between the log of this corrected absorbance and the log of the concentration in water. And we looked at the fit uh, using R squared to find out whether this law uh, was fitting well. And then we have the slope, which corresponds to A, which is uh, the power of the concentration, uh, which relates to the light pass lengths. And then we really have our intercepts are simply the log of our extinction coefficients, which are of interest. So just uh, to, to remove the um, additive effect, so I was saying we use the EMSC model. So we use the EMSC model stating that we have uh, our observed, uh, observed uh, absorbance was uh, actually a linear combination of the absorbance of uh, pure water spectra, which was taken in transmission, uh, a constant uh, baseline, uh, um, a linear baseline, and a polynomial of uh, second order uh, second degree uh, polynomial baseline, and then the pure aluminum uh, spectra uh, when it's totally dried. And so simply then we fitted for each of the spectrum uh, uh, using a weighted least squares regression, uh, this formula. And uh, then we removed only the, sorry, only the um, additive effects uh, all the, the polynomials and the pure aluminum spectra from this absorbance. So this is what we get. So we have the spectra uh, colored by water content. Um, and we see that uh, to the right, we have the corrected spectra where um, we see that the, those baselines were well removed. And we only have uh, the uh, OH uh, features that are present. So. Um, in order to validate the, the, the new uh, uh, law, um, this is, so we, we ran the analysis for one given wavelength. So this is for one given wavelength, the raw absorbance at uh, 1,430 nanometers. Uh, and this is the evolution with water content. Uh, then with the corrected absor uh, absorbance removed from the additive effect, we see that we have a smoother um, uh, evolution. And uh, with the, the formula doing a log-log uh, regression, we see that uh, we have a perfect fit between the log of our corrected absorbance and the log of the water content. And so the, the R squared was of 0 0.995, so which is really good. And um, what, uh, as I mentioned before, um, Taking the equation, we have the slope, which is the power constant, and the, the in blue, the, the intercept, which is uh, our extinction coefficient for that uh, given wavelength. So then we did this uh, analysis for all the wavelengths, and we, we looked at the R squared. So for all the, this is what we get for all the, um, the wavelengths in the abscess. Uh, we have the R squared, which is provided, and we see that uh, starting from 1,200 to, to the end of the spectra, we have really a very nice uh, uh, fit of this, uh, this formula. Uh, this is the slope that we get for all, each of the uh, wavelengths. And we see that uh, it's quite the same uh, 
coming uh, starting at uh, 1,300, we have uh, stable slope values. So the power of our path lengths is uh, quite stable. Uh, and this, uh, those are the fitted intercepts. So it's the log of the extinction coefficients. And what we wanted is really to study the extinction coefficients. So what we did was um, to just uh, power to 10. Um, so in blue, this is uh, the extinction coefficient that we obtain for all the wavelengths. Uh, and then we, we wanted to, to deconvolute the signal to understand uh, uh, what are the peaks, the sub peaks that constitute this broad uh, peak. And we found out uh, that um, there are two main uh, sub peaks found uh, at 1,405 uh, and 1,469 nanometers. And those are similar positions uh, that were found in pure water transmission measurements. Um, so we were quite uh, happy with that. So my, the main takeaways of, uh, of this study is that in scattering media uh, with water, path length modification can be related directly to water content. And, uh, and it, it's related by a power law. And uh, taking into account this law could allow a better identification and analysis of uh, pure extinction coefficients, position, and relative intensity. And uh, further investigations, uh, we, we need to investigate this law on other systems uh, because here aluminum was not absorbing a lot. So we need to see how it acts, how the, this formula acts when we have an absorbing constituent. And we need to investigate the implications on quantitative uh, calibrations based on wet cycles because it seems that if this law actually, this relation is uh, not uh, linear, uh, this could explain why for many, um, uh, studies, the, the prediction of dry matter content directly which, uh, uh, was not uh, suitable. And thank you very much. I'm, I'm finished. Thank, thanks, Alexandre, mm -hmm. for the presentation and for having kept perfectly the time. So we have time for one or two questions or comments. There was a comment in chat by Pierre Madel about, I think, fractality. Uh, if he wants to do it in person, I mean, uh, you have the opportunity. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, uh, very well. Okay. So hold on a second. Uh, can you go back to slide 12, please? 12, uh, yes. Okay. That's an interesting feature that you show on the very right. I mean, the, the absorbance and the log water content is almost a linear regression, which yeah. means in a lot of plot, this is a yes. of fractal properties. Absolutely. It would be interesting to see if uh, you have this repetitive pattern in almost any of the samples that you observe. Question one. Question two, if this is a peculiar property that you only obtain when you dehydrate stuff, or is it also in somewhat with a little bit more background noise observable in the raw absorbances? I assume it is. And see if you work with biomatter, whether that can be also shown. I and mean, then it very much points to me to Benoit Mandelbrot's basic principle that the universe is fractal. So maybe just a kind of, of an input from my side. So. What do you think? Yeah, actually, that's what, as, as I was saying, it's, we need to, to this was uh, put into ev evidence in a simple uh, model, uh, system model. Uh, and so we want to actually uh, show that this law could be applied on biomatter and uh, other more complex matter. Uh, so this is still something that we need to investigate. Um, yeah. And uh, of course, the power law is actually could be related to some sort of uh, fractality, but I'm, I'm not. I know that power laws are actually in many uh, physical uh, phenomena that can be observed, uh, but uh, the the interpretation behind can be a bit more um, uh, complex to yeah. to really uh, define. Um, but for sure, we yeah. We need to actually dig in this relationship for new matter um, because. May I add a quick, quick comment on that or a question? 
Yes. yes. Uh, I think the underlying principle goes back to the weber fechner relationship, the stimulus of the minimal force. Um, it assumes that this is a very basic principle in biology in general, but hardly anyone looks at this anymore because we're so stuffed up with the classical dose response relationship. But in the hormesis concept, this particular law is very, very essential. I agree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And and I absolutely agree. And uh, sorry, I have to jump in. Uh, the point is, uh, you are mentioning this because of the Paul's and Antonella's paper about the um, two, two coherent, uh, coherent and incoherent states, right? Yes. And if we have this uh, power law, and um, you know, which translates to this um, a linear uh, relationship on log log plot, it really means we have uh, this fractality. Like, how, and in that case, I think I said this to Alex a long time um, ago. So in that case, we have a fractal dimension of this process as a, a slope of this uh, li linear uh, relationship. And that means it is 1.5, which means it is between one and two. Um, two different, so it is, um, if a fractal dimension would be one, then we have a, have a point. If it is two, then we have a line, right? If the fractal uh, dimension would be the same as a geometrical dimension. However, I must say something very, um, for me, we tend to, uh, you see, uh, Alex uh, corrected the absurdness. We did not really have such a beautiful, uh, power law. We have at a 30, around 37, 38 percent of the water content um, discontinuity, and uh, it is uh, happening. Uh, the, this, uh, the absorbance that he monitored was at uh, 14, 30 nanometers, which we found very, very important for all the um, things related to the phase transition. So what we think actually is happening here on this. Uh, discontinuity is the incoherent state, and the two, two other things are incoherent. No, 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 it's I, I something think it's, like that. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's the presence. This curve is uh, what um, uh, Pierre was talking about. It's a wave, so we have co coherence, but we have incoherence. This yeah, we, we have incoherent zones in the water that because of these oh, incoherent zones, we have coherence. So it's exactly what it, what it is. And I, um, uh, data analysis and what Alex did and what um, uh, Jean-Michel showed uh, is really um, the richness of different, uh, very, very much like this sport um, new method that you developed because when you analyze, it's not like for this method, for this and that for, for the other one. Every uh, pretreatment gives you information. Just uh, we have to use our heads and brains and, and, and see what is in the data and what comes after pretreatment. And uh, exactly, yeah, this is beautiful. It's so beautiful. And then this waves around uh, non coherence and coherence. And uh, I, I would also like to uh, point out to the comments which are coming now into this um, chat box. Uh, I think what he's also showing here is related to the adsorption because none of the surface is ideal. We don't have the same adsorption properties at the, the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially this palette had size. So it may, the, uh, the, the relationship may change if you, you know, diminish and diminish, diminish palette size and especially when you come to the nano size of the of the particles, it I think can drain drastically change. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yes, but based on that what you said and that what Alexander shows is the nano size clusters, particularly arranged in fractal structure, which means as long as the fractality in this linear regression is given, we are coherent, as Romiana said, and the only let's say discontinuity when the linear regression is broken or this log log plot is no longer in this nice and beautiful setup, then we have a new state where actual decoherent events have taken place. And this would be the transition period would be very interesting. Mm. 
that is what we were seeing. We don't have a, of course, uh, all picture, but the, uh, what Alex did here, uh, I mean, uh, it started as a pre-processing, but it is so fundamental. <laughs> yes, yes. For many of the things that we were well, we seeing here. Yeah, and also what the content. So we, we probably will, some someday we will change our language because we, we talk about what the content, mm. about moisture content. Bulk um, No, what mm -hmm. Alex is using, he's weighing the, the sample. So this is the weight, gravity. Mm. Well, it's another direction of thinking. So which are those water samples, you know, water structures that relate to gravity, for example. So I'm, I'm going in this direction also, but it's too early. Um, I'm happy that you don't have a straight line. It is straight, but not. So th this is the beauty. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Yeah, it was. Thank you. I'm sorry, I had to jump in. <laughs> okay, I think, I think that we have uh, our time. So the, there is just a, 